Over here at Jason's crib. We're about to do some water changes, check up on all the fish. Uh, we're gonna feed the Bristlenos some green beans for the first time. We'll show you guys what that's like. And uh, show you guys the angelfish. We're doing some water changes because they look like they're about to breed, so we'll explain that a little bit. And what else are we doing, Jason? Uh, brine trim factory. Oh yeah, dude. Where would I be without this guy, dude? The whole reason we came over here was because the angel wrigglers are almost free swimming, so we have to set up the brine trim factory. We'll show you guys an easy way to do that and how to hatch them and feed them to the babies. Here we go! So, we walked in and the angelfish were like pecking out their slate. They're not doing it right now, of course, but um, I'll show a little clip of that if I can get a little footage of it. But just a little heads up, usually if you see them like going up and down the slate or cleaning it a lot, like they'll be pecking at it super hard. That usually means you're going to have babies like that day or the next day. Sometimes like two days or three days later. But usually it's like that day or the next day. And so we saw him doing that. So we're going to do a big water change. And then that should trigger him to lay some eggs for us. And there you can see the angelfish pecking the slate. That's what I was trying to talk about for you guys. So you see him cleaning it off. He's hitting it real hard, making sure he gets every last piece of dirt off there so he can lay his eggs on a clean slate. <laughs> Pardon the pun, huh? So there you can clearly see the male was like, looks like he's attacking the slate, but he's actually just cleaning it off. I think that's the male, or we're not sure yet though. We will verify for you once the tubes come out. There we go, there's both of them cleaning it vigorously. You can easily tell now. It looks like they're angry at the slate or something, but like I said, they're really just cleaning it. They're ready to lay their eggs. Hopefully today or tomorrow. Sometimes it takes a day or two longer than that. But they look like they're pretty ready. One more pro tip, low key. You can see that we just threw some bloodworms in there. Usually they go eat them right away, but you can see they're super interested in their slate. So they're not eating that much right now. So it's good to keep an eye on that. If you throw in like a whole cube or a bunch of food and the fish are breeding or they want to breed, make sure you don't leave it in the, in the tank, like on the floor for a long time. We'll probably take that out either tonight or tomorrow if it's still there. Right now, they don't even want to eat. They just want to have some more babies. We'll show you a little update on the other wrigglers here soon. And those are laid by these guys, like I think almost exactly a week ago. All right, guys, just to prove it's the same day, wearing the same clothes and everything. So like I was saying, when they're cleaning the cone, that pretty much means they're about to lay eggs. And it's been like 10 minutes since we changed the water, and they're laying a gang of eggs right now. We did a really big water change. Yeah. 50%. 50% water change on these guys. Gave them a little blood worms. I'll get a little close up and then I'll film them when, we're, when they're done so I don't bother them too much. We're going to try and figure out which one's the male and female real quick. And then we're going to leave them alone. You can see the string of eggs going up there. They're started. a better view for you guys all right i'm gonna let them do their business and then i'm gonna film it for you when they're done another pro tip for you guys too is if you can turn your air filter down 
I would do it because it helps the male fertilize the eggs a little better. I wouldn't suggest doing this. We're just trying to figure out which is the male and female. So obviously the veil tail is the female. The male just like fertilized nothing. <laughs> that was pretty random. But you can see her plopping little eggs when she goes up. Might be pretty hard to see in the camera. I don't want to get too close because it's only our second batch from them. But we'll get some better close-ups and some more in-depth breeding videos for you guys. There we go. He got a little bit of the eggs on there. So you can see the angelfish laying eggs gave you the pro tip on turning down the sponge filter that helps and like I said don't take pictures don't take videos especially if they're a new pair or you're just gonna get a bunch of infertile eggs and it's gonna be a bummer so leave them alone let them do their thing uh, I would leave them alone for like an hour check back on them if they're all done you can either remove the eggs I would wait like two hours if you like just saw them start and you can remove the eggs or you can put a cage around them or you can just leave them and let the parents raise them. It's up to you guys. We realized we needed two more 20 gallons so we went back to my house got two 20 gallons and some supplies. Now we're gonna set those up with the two jars this time because the angelfish are done laying eggs so see that. The angelfish are done laying eggs. So now that we notice they're all done. Oh yeah, also you can notice the sponge filter we turned it lower just like that little pro tip I was telling you guys. So since they're done, we're going to leave it for another 45 minutes or an hour. Make sure the eggs are all fertilized. And then we're going to throw them in a jar and get the hatching process started. Here's a little close up for you guys. So it's not the hugest batch ever, but it looks like probably like a couple hundred or like 400 eggs, 500 eggs. The mother's guarding them. So it's going to be hard to get a good video until they're in the jar. There we go. Sorry for that. Went out of focus there for a second. But yeah, so you can see it's a pretty good batch. There's a bunch of eggs. We'll show you. Those little white ones on there are like unfertile eggs. Don't worry about that. But uh, yeah, so there we go. One more thing you'll notice, like she was just doing, the little white eggs, they'll try and pick off the slate. And because they're unfertile and they'll get fungus easily. So that's why people remove the slate out of there because they'll try and get one egg and accidentally bite like five or six. And those get lost. And then all of a sudden in a couple of days, you're only left with like 50 eggs because they tried to clean them too well. So that's something to look out for if your fish are picking all over the slate and you keep losing eggs, they're probably eating them. And that's why we take the slates out and hatch them artificially because we want a better hatch rate. This time we caught them right when they're laying as you guys can see. So if the male did his job correctly while we were gone, we should get a good batch here. You guys will see probably in like four days from now maybe three days them hatching and we'll show you a little update of the ones that hatched last week same pair we set up the new 20 gallon so this is the new setup right here we got the fry jar where you can see them now free swimming we'll get a better view of that for you guys in a little bit but you can definitely see them all swimming around there we moved all the other fish from the 10 gallon in here we got a little sponge filter so it can circulate the water right by the heater. We have an air stone, so that's gonna go in the next jar, which you'll see for the eggs that just got laid. And then we have our rearing set up right there with the fry in it. So this is gonna have two jars in it, one with hatching eggs and one with uh, fry and then fish. So that's a little breeder setup for you. You can probably fit three, maybe four jars in there too if you really needed to. That's just a 20 gallon high standard tank. Be right back. 
so we got some uh, hydrogen peroxide. Everyone knows what that is, hopefully. If you've ever been outside when you were a kid. Anyways, um, so what we do is put 10 drops of hydrogen peroxide into the new jar where the eggs are going. Remember that jar is separate from the rest of the tank, so don't worry about putting hydrogen peroxide in there. Even if uh, 10 drops did get out in the tank, it's like really not a big deal at all. Sorry for the like weird glare, but you can see what's happening. There's the jar, we got an air stone in there. Put the hydrogen peroxide, 10 drops per gallon. We actually prefer to use methylene blue, but I left it at my house and we already went back there once. So we were like twice. not going, yeah twice. So we are like not going back there again. Anyways, got this going. Now we're about to get the eggs out of the angelfish tank. Put them in here and we'll give you one more shot. So we're just taking the slate out of the angelfish tank now. And like I said, don't worry if it goes in the air for a little bit. They can handle it. You just can't get them completely dried out. So we're taking them, yup. So we're taking them from that tank. One room over. No big deal. Ow, bumped into the fan. So you want to put it upside down so the eggs are like near the bottom and make sure they stay underwater. Also, don't worry if the bubbles go right over the eggs, because they'll still be fine. But uh, it's better to put the eggs on one side and the air stone on the other side. And unlike discus, I mean, I've never really tried discus with a lot of bubbles, but unlike them, you put high flow bubbles in here. So let's see if we can get an up close for you guys. All right, T boys and girls. So there's the big old batch of eggs. You can see there's a couple patches missing. That's where they ate the white eggs off probably. So there's a little close up and a far away view. I keep that light there for a second though. All right, let's see if we can get a good close up. So you can see all those guys on there. Like I said, airstone on one side, slate on the other. Let's see if we can see the, oh yeah, you can see the babies swimming around in there really good. It's hard to get a focus because the other fish are in there still. But uh, let's see here. There's a little shot. You can see them all swimming around. They just started free swimming like this morning and uh, feeding them like they're they're pretty much free swimming. Tomorrow they'll be a little more active. They're pretty much just bumping around right now. But 12 hours, 24 hours after they're free swimming is when you want to feed them brine shrimp. We're going to be a little late this time, but it should be okay. I'm not going to go too into depth on how you hatch the brine shrimp because this video is probably going to be a little long already. But anyways, you can see like we last minute uh, had to set this up. So it's just a two liter bottle pretty much cut in half. And you flip up, flip the top half upside down and shove it in the bottom half. It's pretty easy to see. You hook up a little air stone into it. Throw the brine shrimp in there. Uh, let them bubble around for like 45 minutes. And then you throw the salt in there. In 24 hours they'll be ready to go. We got this meat injector here. You can get these at like Target or like any local little like thrift store, whatever you want to call it. Anyways, we attach it to some air tube. So we're going to suck up some brine shrimp and then you'll see why I use the meat injector later. You attach it to the, to the needle on top of the sponge. You'll see in a second. So what you want to do is put a light on your brine shrimp for like five minutes on the bottom and they'll all collect at the bottom. And you throw your little air tube down there. And you suck up your brines. There's like the best view you're going to get of the brine shrimp. You can see them all vibrating around in there. So what you want to do to feed your fish first is unplug the air so there's no air going through there. And then this, you can probably barely see it. We'll do a better video soon. But that's the little clip that you clip to the bottom of the, or screw onto the bottom of the meat injector. And then you can see the little needle down there. That's where the brine shrimp are going to come out. 
Give them a nice spray of that. And the way you know they're eating their food is because uh, their bellies, after like 15 or 20 minutes, look at them. Sometimes you might need a magnifying glass, but their bellies will turn like bright orange. So it's hard to notice if they're eating or not. They're just going to be bouncing around. But after 20 minutes, turn your bubbles back on and it will filter all the brine shrimp that's uneaten out and your fish are going to be excellent and full. Alright, so that's all we've done today. We hooked up the angel fish with a new breeder setup, the 20 gallon. We got the brine shrimp going for the babies that just started free swimming. We put the new eggs in a jar, showed you guys how to do that. We had a couple little updates on everything and that's pretty much it. Any questions comment below like us and subscribe us tell us to your friends or tell your friends about us however you say it. i'm staring at the camera so i'm like tripping anyways anything else bro no yeah, looks good i think we'll have a pretty good understanding how to do this yeah this we're gonna do like a more in-depth one like i said eventually but for right now it's just we have stuff everywhere so it's kind of hard to do like good videos anyways peace mm -hmm. out Fish homies, we'll catch you in a couple days or tomorrow. Boom.